Alright everyone, welcome back. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto, bringing you another video. Today is a deep dive, unlocking the potential of the UTXO model. This is going to be a write-up from Robert Kornacki. He is a research fellow with Emergo. If you're interested in learning more about smart contracts, UTXOs, Oracle pools, I would recommend that you check out his latest podcast from the Cardano Effect. As far as what we're looking at here in this video, I've got his GitHub pulled up here where he authored this write-up and going into more detail as to what we can anticipate with smart contracts using the unspent transaction output model. So getting into the video, what he's done here is kind of outlined some key topics that we're gonna be discussing. So namely, we've got smart contracts, there's UTXOs, data inputs, scaling, contract updates, and context claims. As far as the format for this video today, I'm gonna to be reading through the portions that he's written and sharing with you all some of my thoughts as we go through it. So if you guys are interested in that type of content, be sure to stay tuned. Introduction. The extended UTXO model empowers smart contract writers with a robust and flexible base to build on top of. In contrast to the account model, UTXO-based smart contracts have no concept of a function which you call within a transaction in order for state transitions to take place. Instead, UTXOs use a much more functional approach where every time one is spent, the old UTXO is destroyed and a new output is created. In this process of spending a UTXO, the smart contract executes in order to verify that this transaction is valid. Thus, rather than looking at smart contracts as autonomous entities which act, it is more valid to consider them as guards who mandate truthful and accurate execution. While a little bit counterintuitive, this is in fact a very useful distinction. Rather than having an unscalable mess of a system which is trying to achieve the impossible goal of becoming a world computer, we can instead be realistic and optimize the design of smart contracts to make them as scalable and powerful as possible. By being clear in our expectation of what smart contracts are meant to do, we also unlock the ability to discover new untapped potential. This is what is offered to us by the extended UTXO model. In this write-up, we will touch upon a number of such new innovations that are only possible thanks to the concept of data inputs on UTXO systems. So how do UTXO contracts work? In the introduction, we quickly skimmed over UTXOs at a high level. This is fine if one is already well versed in the area. However, for the majority of readers, it can be quite abstract and challenging to wrap your head around. As such, let's break this down to basics and work our way up from there to novel innovations. A UTXO stands for Unspent Transaction Output. At a very high level, each UTXO, also known as a box, on an extended UTXO system is comprised of one, the assets inside, two, the smart contract or script that locks the UTXO, and three, on-chain data held in the box which is relevant to the smart contract. Depending on the blockchain at hand, there may be other kinds of data held in the UTXO as well, for example, metadata. These differences, however, don't typically impact the expressiveness of the model itself, and as such are not considered in this write-up. In existing blockchains, such as Ergo and Cardano, the smart contract that a UTXO is locked under is defined by the address. As such, UTXO A is locked by smart contract Y. If UTXO A is sent to the address smart contract address Y, the address is typically either the hash of the contract or a serialized form of the contract. When a UTXO at smart contract address Y is used as an input in a transaction, the code or the logic within smart contract Y is executed to determine whether or not the transaction is valid. During execution, the smart contract typically reads, the assets held in the UTXO, the attached data within the UTXO, assets, data, contracts of the other inputs in the transaction, and other contexts of the current transaction. The smart contract reads the above listed data as input, and if it executes to the equivalent of true, then the transaction is valid and passes. This is the core workflow which UTXO-based smart contracts use. What this means is that every time you wish to update data held by a dApp inside of a UTXO, you must spend the original UTXO, thereby destroying it, and create a new UTXO at the same address and holding the same assets. This new UTXO, however, has a new value in its data, thereby causing a state transition to happen from the old data value to the new data value. 
Each UTXO holds its own personal state in the data it has attached to it. As the data and assets move from one UTXO to another, they pass through state transitions, which can cause them to split, accumulate, or be deleted, or be used with other assets or data from other UTXOs. These higher order actions allow for more complex logic to be encoded with potential for multiple input UTXOs and multiple output UTXOs. This ends up being one of the key basic building blocks for developing dApps. Basic cross-contract interoperability. As we have seen, spending UTXOs is at the core of the extended UTXO smart contract model. All execution happens when a UTXO is spent. The astute reader may have already noticed that since we have state data attached individually to each UTXO, every time a state transition happens, the result is reflected in said data. As such, the data often is pre-processed wherein it already exists and contains information that could be useful for other dApps or contracts to reference without any further execution required. An example of useful information that could be used by other smart contracts would be Oracle data. Using such data held in a UTXO in a naive manner would entail spending the UTXO. By using the UTXO that has Oracle data as an input, you are spending it and thereby providing access to its data to your other transaction inputs. This is how your dApp can attain access to data held under UTXOs locked under the other smart contracts. That said, having to spend every single UTXO which you wish to read data from has a number of strong drawbacks. The smart contract of the UTXO with the data must execute, thereby increasing computational complexity and costs. The UTXO must be spent, meaning that one transaction can use the UTXO data per block or slot. The transaction fees increase due to needless excess execution and recreation of the output data UTXO. Every UTXO which wishes to allow read access through spending must encode the logic directly within their smart contract. They are liable to spam attacks by bad actors who wish to wreak havoc on a protocol. Increased off-chain complexity in transaction creation and finding the latest UTXO. The above negatives make it clear that a new approach needs to be taken in order to address these issues. Reading data across UTXOs and dApps is a very common design pattern that will be required when implementing protocols to significant complexity. Data inputs as a powerful solution. Thankfully, an extremely useful innovation was figured out by the core Ergo developers while building the very first UTXO-based smart contract powered blockchain. Rather than forcing all transactions to destroy or spend all inputs as is the norm in historic UTXO-based blockchains, what if we instead brought in the concept of read-only inputs? These would allow any transaction to reference any other currently in the UTXO set and read the data held in it without any of the problems listed in the previous section. This is exactly what data inputs are. No smart contract execution occurs because the box is not being destroyed or spent. This means that a given UTXO can be read by every single transaction in a block or a slot in parallel as none of them consume the data, but instead all share a reference to it. Transaction fees decrease due to the no contract execution and no extra output needing to be created. All further negatives are addressed as well, making data inputs a clear design choice that all UTXO-based blockchains should implement. As can be seen in the diagram, data inputs are a prime mechanism for many use cases such as DeFi. In this diagram, the interest rate of our DeFi dApp relies on external Oracle data from the real world. The DeFi dApp uses an Oracle pool in order to fetch said data, which in our case is $12.93. This is the market price of an asset in the real world and is accessed by the DeFi dApp via a data input. The UTXO of the Oracle pool is referenced within the data input section of the transaction, and as such, the data becomes available to our DeFi dApp smart contract. During the state transition or spending transaction, which updates the state of our DeFi dApp, we can see that the Oracle data was used to perform an interest rate calculation. The original interest rate was 3.23%, but after reading the Oracle pool data, the interest rate was updated to 3.53%. This is the basic process of how data inputs work in practice. In our example above, we only show a single dApp referencing the Oracle pool UTXO as a data input. 
However, potentially thousands of DeFi dApps could do just the same for their own use within the same block or slot, assuming the blockchain throughput supports it. Unlocking the potential of data inputs. Now that we've touched upon what data inputs are and what kind of benefits they provide at a base level, let's browse through some of the truly novel innovations that empower a UTXO-based blockchain with scaling dApps by parallelizing on-chain computation. One of the key new tools offered by data inputs on UTXO systems is concurrency and parallelism. Rather than all actions within a dApp being done sequentially in the same contract or UTXO, it is instead possible for actors in a protocol to perform their portion of the protocol entirely in their own UTXO. This means that they have no direct reliance on the sequential and thus potentially blocking operations of others, thereby increasing the output of the given dApp at hand. Once an actor has finished their portion of the protocol, the resulting UTXOs generated from it can either be spent or read. The former allows complex protocols with distinct actors who provide both data and assets to take part in parallel, and then have their UTXO consumed back into the core protocol. This can be useful for things such as crowdfunding or on-chain tournaments, for example. For tournaments, multiple users play matches in parallel and their results and staked funds get consumed or converge back together after the rounds have finished. On the other hand, the latter, reading UTXOs, allows for a lot more power to be unlocked thanks to data inputs coming into the picture. By reading data which has been generated in parallel, it means that this data is acquired for cheaper, can be reused by others, and is accessible to everyone at the exact same time. Thus, we unlock impressive potential such as having multi-stage smart contract sub-protocols running in a dApp which execute completely in parallel yet access each other's data in order to perform checks and guarantees that everything is in order. Furthermore, since the data from all the UTXOs running in parallel is accessible via data inputs, we have the ability to take snapshots of the state of a fully parallelized dApp. Rather than having these parallelized UTXOs be blocked or waiting for actions to occur in the core state of the protocol, in order for said UTXOs to be further spent or used, they can continue their portion of the protocol without any problems. Afterwards, snapshots are generated by actors on the blockchain who are incentivized or paid by the dApp to find all protocol-related UTXOs. Once found within the UTXO set on the blockchain, these accumulators reference all of these UTXOs as data inputs and accumulate them together into a final value representing the current state of the protocol. As such, we have a viable concurrency model on extended UTXO blockchains, which is further made more powerful thanks to data inputs. Seamless dApp updates in the UTXO model. Data inputs also enable seamless updating of multi-stage UTXO-based dApp protocols via the use of proxy boxes. By having proxy boxes which holds either the computational logic of a given stage in a protocol or the address of the next stages which can be spent into, we have an outsourced UTXO which provides the ability for us to update our dApps. This outsourced proxy UTXO will implement a governance scheme which allows for updating the underlying script which locks it, and or the data in its registers which contain the addresses of following stages. This can use a multi-signature scheme, a token-based voting scheme, or any other governance protocol in order to issue updates to the dApp. This opens up the door for dApps that have governance tokens to be self-updatable by the community that governs the protocol. If a supermajority votes to update stage X from contract A to contract A dash, then this will be reflected in the proxy box and as such will affect all future actions or state transitions in the dApp. The flexibility of how dApp updates are implemented via proxy boxes is thanks to data inputs providing us an outsourced UTXO, which contains all of this logic outside of our core dApp protocol itself. Efficient and trustless global context claims. Since anyone and everyone on the blockchain has access to data stored in any UTXO as data inputs, we can make efficient claims about the state of any dApp trustlessly. This means that without developers providing explicit permission by encoding extra logic, which would increase computation cost, or having to do any extra work, users on the blockchain can access the current state of any dApp within their own contracts. 
As an example, we can make claims that DAPX does not have more than $100 million in liquidity and put a bounty up for anyone to disprove said claim. What this means is that while our UTXO which makes this claim exists, we can treat it as an invariant that said claim is true. This can then be built off as a building block in more complex protocols. Claim checkers will constantly scan the UTXO set to verify that DAPX does not have more than $100 million in liquidity. If DAPX does eventually get to that point, then all of the claim checkers will rush to spend the claim UTXO in order to earn the bounty. This would then signal that our claim or invariant was disproved, and as such, we have an interactive mechanism for efficient global UTXO set claims for our DAPs. This is an extremely powerful mechanism which was never possible before in any other system prior. It opens up the door for many intriguing use cases such as permissionless dApp insurance or permissionless trustless prediction markets about the state of any dApp on the entire blockchain. These are just a couple of interesting possibilities with major implications. However, undoubtedly, there are more and more yet to be discovered. Conclusion as can be seen, there is a huge potential unlocked thanks to the great innovation of data inputs on extended UTXO-based blockchains. The points touched on above are meant to give a taste of what is possible without diving in too deep into technical details. Further, Emergo research write-ups will be released in the future which go in-depth on all of these innovations and potentially more as they are discovered. Wow, an incredible amount of information here in this article. Uh, really just incredible to see what's possible um, as far as being able to use Oracle pools to do things as far as submitting real world data into smart contracts using something like data inputs. So really amazing to see that. I think that by implementing this type of strategy, they're really gonna cut down a lot of the friction that we'll see when we actually start to see real use and utility happening with these dApps and smart contracts running on the blockchain. Really cool. So Robert Kornacki is currently working with a lot of these other developers on the Ergo project. Uh, this is essentially going to be a UTXO based smart contract blockchain that's going to allow them to use it almost as like a test bed and later being able to implement some of these characteristics and features and functionalities onto the Cardano blockchain. I definitely did learn a lot from this article. It's amazing to see what some of these top minds are able to come up with. And uh, I'm sure we're gonna be able to expect some pretty amazing things once we actually see this implemented. So guys, that is what I have for you here in this video. I hope you did enjoy it. Let me know what you guys think about all that down in the comments section. What do you feel like this is going to do to benefit smart contracts? Do you feel like it's really gonna speed things up? Do you feel like it's gonna increase efficiency? Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. All right, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care. Thank you.